Well, it's funny, like even when I rewatch it, because I, I can't ever keep the whole thing in my head, um, I'm finding myself being newly persuaded from person after person. I mean, my simpler one is a lot like what John Paul Ryan says at the end, that you know, Jack is a cautionary figure you know, for um, a middle-aged father of a very young son, <laughs> like myself, who's in danger of falling into a pit of working on an endless project that doesn't make any sense to anybody. <laughs> Any questions about Alcan? It's hard to see. Yes, you all know. Of all of the theories, which one do you find the most plausible? Theories, which one do you find the most plausible? I don't know, plausible. <laughs> but the one that um, just resonates with me is Julie Kearns and the whole impossible uh, geography of the hotel. I think. That's something that I was, been part of the glue that, that got me stuck on this film when I was 12, you know? It's just that dreamlike quality to the whole hotel. I mean, I can't force myself to pick one, but I also get really excited when two of them or more start to overlap, the way, like, John Bell Ryan is talking about the dissolve of the Hitler mustache. And <laughs> Hitler isn't really a thing that he talks a lot about, but. Jeffrey Cox does. <laughs> yes. Uh, were you able to talk to anyone like Jack Nicholson or Stephen King who were working on the film? Well, we we didn't try. Um, you know, at the outset, when you know we spent you know six months or a year kind of projecting what was going to be the scope of the film. We decided pretty early on that we wanted this to be the story of what happens, you know, when a film leaves the filmmaker and starts creating these chain reactions in the audience's minds. Um, um, so we deliberately, you know, never approached anybody who had directly worked on the movie. Yeah, well, we were pretty tough on ourselves of not doing that. But at this point, I would love to hear from those people. <laughs> well, and certainly the first question for Jack is, what was that? It was, where did that Playgirl magazine come from? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Certainly not right away, <laughs> um, but you, you bring up Eyes Wide Shut, and that's really interesting because, you know, again, in the planning of this, um, although the, this whole idea started with The Shining, um, I figured that we would start to find a lot more about, about other films, and certainly 2001 seems to lend itself, you know, to you know really deep allegorical readings. But Eyes Wide Shut is like the new contender that more and more stuff is being pulled out of that one now than any of the others. It's coming on strong. I mean, <laughs> in the last nine months alone, there's just been like this exponential growth of theories on that. Oh, there's a great overlap between The Shining and Eyes Wide Shut, which is that Minotaur poster um, that says Monarch on the top. Okay. <laughs> Monarch is another word, is another name of the MK12 sort of classified government mind control exercises, which tie into people's reading of who are the people at the Eyes Wide Shut party. <laughs> um, so it's great, like when Julie talks about that poster and about Monarch being royalty and about you know, the Minotaur and all that, I'm like, but what about MK12, man? The same way when Jeffrey Cox describes that shot where the chair disappears and he says, Kubrick's the master of depth of field and composition and everything in that shot is really important. I'm saying, take a look at that scrapbook in the foreground <laughs> that, that, that most people seem to miss. Um, there's not a lot, it's, it's not about the chair, it's about the scrapbook at that time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. What did uh, each other's interviewer, like, what did the subjects think about each other? Did they have opinions on one person is one person a crackpot? Like, is there a rivalry? <laughs> well, we had, at Sundance, we had two of them there, Bill 
Blakemore, Native American, Jeffrey Cox, Colin Cox. And it was interesting, they saw <laughs> the film for the first time with an audience. And then they came on stage with us afterwards, like here. And it was very interesting. They very much liked the films, and they were both fans of each other's work. But it was interesting to hear them working through being in the same company with some of the other people that they didn't, um, maybe weren't as excited about. Well, it was, and it's kind of split into factions now, that Jeffrey and Bill are very much a team. John Phil Ryan, who talks about the forward-backwards thing that dissolves, has been posting a lot of Julie Kearns, the one who does the maps message board. And in fact, he's the one who turned me on to her, because he had some maps that weren't nearly as elaborate. And he's like, dude, if you're into the maps, you got to check out Julie's side. <laughs> so those guys are kind of joining forces, and Jay is his own team. <laughs> but on, on Jay, did, side. Jay did say, after he'd seen the film, he goes, you know, I buy that Holocaust stuff, but Native American, that guy's crazy. <laughs> Right here in front. Uh, did you find any other theories that didn't make it in? Did you find any other theories that didn't make it in? Let's try to go through a bunch of them. There is, there are no ghosts, but in, there are no ghosts, it's only Jack's imagination, and you can tell that because every time Jack looks, Jack is talking to a ghost, he's really looking into a mirror on the other side of the set. The film is about the supremacy of the moving image over text and still imagery. The movie is an expose and a condemnation of America's um, Abandonment of the gold standard. <laughs> There's a severed head and the blood coming out of the elevator, and it is Tony, the little boy that lives in his mouth. <laughs> Some guy did this incredibly elaborate 3D CGI simulation of the blood coming out of the elevator to investigate that theory and realized that it was only the reflection of the exit sign. <laughs> Well, there are apparently there are eyes appearing in a lot of different shots of the film. It is a Charlie Kaufman-esque story, which um, most of what we're seeing is actually the novel that Jack is writing. Right? <laughs> Great. Let's hear it for room two.